Entergy is proud to support programming on LPB and greener practices that preserve Louisiana. The goal of our environmental and sustainability initiatives really is to ensure that our kids and future generations can be left with a cleaner planet. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you. We're going to have to be innovative. A plan in place to return to school. If you don't wear a mask, there's a potential that you could get this virus, infect yourself, die from it, or infect someone else. The layer of protection that could literally save your life. When you treat the disease, you treat the biological, psychological, social, and emotional. Problems spike when the treatment cycle is broken. Right through today, keep a good attitude through today, get some sleep, and have a good attitude tomorrow. Wise words from a Louisiana young hero who has seen his share of challenges. Hi everyone, I'm Natasha Williams. And I'm Andre Morrow. Much more on those top stories in a moment on this week's edition of SWI. But first, Louisiana now listed as a red zone state by the White House. It's for cases and test positivity. As of today, 88,590 cases in the state with over 2,000 new cases every day for the last four days. Here's the latest from Governor John Bell Edwards. Unfortunately, uh, the numbers are not getting better. This week we surpassed 1 million tests and in fact um, thus far we're at 1 million uh, basically 24,000 uh, tests which is number two in the country in per capita uh, testing. But a state public health official is calling the testing a quote American failure because of the long turnaround time and problems with contact tracing. Now let's take a look at some of the other stories making headlines across Louisiana. There's a new last call for bars across the state and in New Orleans because of the sharp rise in COVID-19 cases. New Orleans had allowed bars to reopen at 25 percent capacity in mid-June. The governor's new statewide orders does allow bars takeout service or delivery, but bar operators say it's a shutdown nonetheless. This week, the state began accepting applications for a $250 one-time payment to frontline workers at grocery stores or those at nursing homes in the early days of the pandemic. There's a website for applicants. Visit frontlineworkers.la.gov. That's frontlineworkers.la.gov. No decision yet on football season game changes or cancellations from SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey. He'll wait until the end of the month, he says. It means for now, LSU's season opener with UT San Antonio is still on for September 5th in Tiger Stadium. Sankey met with athletic directors from the league's 14 schools this week. Already, the Big Ten and Pac-12 have eliminated non-conference games from their schedules. The State High School Athletic Association, though, says prep football across Louisiana won't return until the state moves from Phase 3 to Phase 4 and that pushing fall seasons to spring has been discussed but is not a first option. Only in Phase 4 is full contact using helmet and shoulder pads in scrimmages with other teams allowed. Though worried about a drain on the state treasury, Governor Edwards signed into law the full multi-million dollar package of business tax breaks lawmakers passed in the June special session. It's part of the coronavirus recovery effort. It means the suspension of part of the corporate franchise tax for a year, a sizable tax break to the state's casinos, and the expansion of tax credit programs that had been cut. The state this week gave people two extra days to file state income taxes after a computer glitch caused filing problems. That pushed the deadline, which was Wednesday of this week, through today, Friday, July 17th. An entourage from the White House, led by Vice President Mike Pence, came to Baton Rouge this week, went to LSU and talked to Coach O at Tiger Stadium. Attorney General Jeff Landry was not there because he has tested positive for COVID-19. People of Louisiana know how to slow the spread. They know how to flatten the curve. They did it before, uh, and we're very confident Louisiana is going to do it again. But we are going to have to make sure that we wear the mask, that we social distance, that we limit 
our social gatherings in terms of, of the number of people. And if we will do that, we're going to be successful. As Coach O explained to me, he was able to keep his football players safe and healthy and well here and tested until some might have wandered off to a bar. <laughs> and after wandering off to a bar, they did become positive. And so he's made it clear that that is not on any longer the itinerary for a practice. The Board of Elementary and Secondary Education, Bessie, approved minimum standards to get public schools open in the fall. I talked with the state's new state superintendent of schools, Dr. Cade Brumley. I have been able to gain access to some of the top medical professionals in the state of Louisiana, uh, both from the Department of Health, but at Ochsner Medical, uh, Children's Hospital, Tulane Medical. And so in conjunction with those organizations, as well as many other stakeholder groups, uh, here at the department, we built out a minimum uh, set of standards uh, that school systems have to utilize in order for them to open their schools up in the fall. So could something in one parish that's highly populated look different than a parish that's less populated? We wanted to provide standards, but also give systems some degree of local autonomy and local flexibility in terms of the implementation of those standards, recognizing that a one-size-fits-all blanket plan would not necessarily work for the state of Louisiana as a whole. This is going to be a tough year. This is going to be a challenging year. It could be a year of starts and stops. Uh, but school systems and school leaders and educators, we have to find a way. Uh, our teachers right now, essential workers, they're stepping in into the front lines uh, to do this work. We have to make sure that they're protected, that they have the PPE that they need, the sanitizer, the disinfectant, the face coverings. Uh, all of this is really important to make sure that we're able to have a successful school year. So we're asking for our lower elementary students that they remain with the same pod, same cohort of kids all day, uh, reminiscent of that um, old one-room schoolhouse where that one teacher serves that group of children all day long. And so we've asked systems to do that. Um, as we move into high school grades, um, Systems are, are working through how they are going to be able to socially distance students uh, at six feet or to all extents possible and still allow those students to be able to, to change classes. And I've, I've heard some smart ideas on, on how that might be happening. Uh, with face coverings, we've said that students in grades pre-K through two can certainly wear a face covering. Uh, that is allowable. But at the state level, we've said that students in grades three through 12 must wear a face covering to all extents possible. Grades pre-K through two, we were concerned about a couple of things. One, uh, students touching their face more, uh, touching their mouth, touching their nose as they tried to adjust that face covering throughout the day and knowing that that could be more problematic than them having the covering on. Also in those early grades, language acquisition, language development, uh, the interaction between the teacher and the kid, seeing how the lips work, seeing how the tongue works in terms of making sounds was really important. And so as we, as we weighed all of that, that's where we said grades pre-K to two, you may wear a face covering, but it's not mandated. But none of us have ever educated 800,000 children during a global health pandemic. So we're going to have to be nimble. Uh, we're going to have to be innovative. Uh, we're going to have to give each other patience um, so that we can all work through this together. Bromley was named superintendent of schools in June. He's also pushing for better broadband access statewide. It's an area where the state continues to lag behind. You can also hear more from the superintendent and other education leaders on this month's Louisiana Public Square. The show will address concerns about the upcoming school year from pre-K through college. Catch Reopening Education. That's Wednesday at 7 p.m. on LPB. You can visit lpb.org slash public square for more information. Can face masks help prevent the spread of the coronavirus? Doctors say yes, combined with other preventative measures, wearing one can slow the spread. But for some, the point still isn't getting across. We spoke to Dr. Ronnie Whitfield, who says because of that, many more lives will be lost to the virus. Although there is still a lot we don't know about the novel coronavirus now spiking around the country, we do know the importance of wearing a mask to slow the spread. Initially, we didn't know. There wasn't a lot of research, at least in the United States, about what the mask could do and what it could prevent. 
Um, the problem with coronavirus or COVID-19 is that it can actually spread from asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic individuals. So we don't know if they had the infection. How do we think it spreads? We think it spreads via respiratory droplets. So when you talk, you laugh, you cough, you sneeze, you sing, uh, and you're in a bar in close proximity to someone and you're talking loud, then those respiratory droplets can spread. So if you have a face mask on, whether it be cloth, surgical, N95, whatever that mask might be, and we'll get into that a little bit later, those masks provide a barrier between your mouth, the respiratory droplets, and the persons or the persons around you. And so that's why it's important that we wear a mask when we're out in public. Dr. Ronnie Whitfield has been practicing medicine for more than 20 years. He says the numbers don't lie. Without continued precautions, our battle with the coronavirus could be far from over. We are losing lives. You know, we're talking about the, I think there were 2,200 cases today, 1,700 cases yesterday in Louisiana. Um, and then out of that number, as those numbers increase, most likely you're going to see more deaths just because the numbers are, are larger. I mean, we went from 20, 30,000 cases a day, averaging over 50,000 cases a day in the, in the United States. And the death rate has been a little bit lower in general, but we are seeing those numbers ticking up. I think we'll be well over 200,000 deaths if everything continues in this pace by, by November. And so we need to protect ourselves. And along with frequent hand washing, you know, avoiding non-essential travel, uh, and wearing face masks, you know, we, we've got to do all those things collectively or we're going to continue to spread the virus. We hit flatten that curve in Louisiana and now the curve is starting to go up again, possibly overwhelming our, our health care system. Dr. Whitfield says everyone must take the virus seriously, especially now. And we're seeing a spread. We're seeing another spike in the numbers, not just here. And over, I think over 42 states in the country where the numbers are spiking, you know, Texas, Florida, they're getting slammed pretty hard. Louisiana, we're having some, some serious issues in Lake Charles and Lafayette. So we've got to stop the spread of this virus or we may end up back in phase one, which is what everybody does not want. Baton Rouge has joined a number of other cities around the country with a mandatory mask requirement in public places until at least August 3rd. But Dr. Whitfield says enforcing it will be difficult. If we have to enforce, you know, mask wearing, we won't be successful. That means by going out writing citations and closing buildings down and are adhering to the policies. So we've got to take this virus seriously. These numbers have names to them, Natasha. People are dying that I personally have taken care of. They're dying. And so this is not just some numbers that they're throwing up in the air. People are dying from this. And that's what's you know, concerning to me. I don't want to take this virus home to my family, so I wear a mask when I'm in public. We asked him about the different kinds of masks. Here's our surgical mask. Before using your mask, you're gonna wash your hands. Uh, and then you take the surgical mask by the straps and those go over the ears here. You wanna pull it down and make sure that the nose and mouth is covered. And this has a little metal rod for uh, support so that it can secure to the nose. So you press that in and sort of adhere to the nose. What, what's the difference? The surgical mask is protection. This N95 is more protection, right? Yeah, you have increased protection with N95. N95 speaks to the number of particles, so it blocks out 95% of the particulates that can get through the mask. Mm -hmm. And so um, surgical masks don't have that amount of, of, of protection, but it's, it's close. It has two straps as well. One goes over the head, one goes behind the, the head. Mm -hmm. It also has a metal rod for fixing that or attaching that to the nose. And then we have the homemade or the cloth mask, um, which again, does not provide the same level of protection as N95 or a surgical mask but it does prevent the, the passing of large respiratory droplets. And so again, covering the mouth and nose here, straps go behind. And of course, as I said, these you wash like underwear. And I noticed it may be a little X-rated, but if they're, they're like underwear, you got to wash them uh, re before reusing. The surgical mask, these two are disposable one-time use. And one more reason to put that mask on. There's another potential concern that we will get back to the point where we're talking about overwhelming the healthcare system with these spikes in cases, uh, shortage of PPE, uh, the personal protective equipment, and uh, the, the, utili the utilization of, of ICUs and, and, and ventilators. We may get back to that conversation. That kind of calmed down a little bit, Natasha, but now we seem like we're getting back that way, and that's not the direction we want to be going in. Dr. Whitfield says the slogan, use your head, stop the spread, is real. Wear a mask, and the life you save might be your own.
At the outset of the pandemic, no one knew if drug overdose deaths would increase or decrease. They were already on record paces across the country and in Louisiana. What we're seeing is that being home and possibly with family has not been enough. I talked with Dr. Jan Laffinghouse, Interim Director of Capital Area Human Services and an Addiction Recovery Specialist and EBR District Attorney Hiller Moore. Data shows as of June, 108 people in East Baton Rouge died from drug overdoses. That number almost matches the record of 127 for all of 2019. Addiction recovery leaders say when the pandemic took hold and interrupted treatment, it broke an essential lifeline. When you treat the disease, you treat the biological, psychological, social, and emotional. And so when you take away that social component, that connection to other people, stay connected to stay protected is one of the mantras that we talk about. When you take away that, you're taking one of the tools of recovery away and it has left people vulnerable. Dr. Jan tells me fears about the pandemic only compounded any predisposition for anxiety and depression. People are triggered. And it's a very human thing to want to end pain and suffering. And so people who don't have the skills to do things that are constructive to cope will do what they can in the interim. She says the essential social interaction component has returned with safety measures built in. We were very judicious about how we were allowing people to the building. We have screenings, we have temperature checks, we also limit the number of people in the building. Everyone has to wear masks to enter, masks to be worn, not only by our staff, but also by our visitors in common areas. We are spread out even in our uh, recovery treatment groups. We just need people to know that there are mitigation strategies in place and it's not unique to Capital Area. Many of um, our sister agencies and other providers in the community are actually doing everything they can to put things in place so that people are comfortable and have some confidence returning to service because as they stay out there, their addictions worsen and the disease, when it is left untreated, is fatal. From a criminal standpoint, trying to stem the tragedy of drug overdose is a dilemma for law enforcement, like East Baton Rouge District Attorney Hiller Moore. Man, we have seen in the past years where the heroin, fentanyl, opioid overdose deaths have surpassed or doubled or tripled homicide rates, which is really alarming for us. You know, our hope is that uh, parents, coworkers, family members, acquaintances, if they see someone that's struggling or know about someone, try to get them some assistance and some help. Uh, you know, we're, we're prosecutors. We accept cases and prosecute cases. We do not wish or want to prosecute people that have a drug addiction. We'd rather get to the drug dealer because the drug dealer knows that these people are struggling. And despite what they know, they're still dealing the drugs. That's, that's just wrong, plainly wrong. And they know that people are dying from what they're dealing. And we have to find a way to stop this. And obviously the way we've done things in the past, it's not working. We have to find a way to stop the supply and then stop the need for the people here. Because as you indicated, you know, people that want the drug are gonna get the drug. And what can we do to help these people? Dr. Jan says mobile services have also returned since the initial lockdown, and that is bringing help out into the community. Parish and county leaders are calling for more federal money to help offset their big financial losses, money for hospitals, for long-term care centers, even 911 operations. I talked with our state's two representatives. Now, they're a part of NACO, that's the National Association of Counties, and in our state parishes, Archie Chasson from Lafouche and Robbie Miller from Tanchpahoe. We're looking at nationwide, you're looking at $144 billion impact to local county governments and, and, and parish governments across the Across the country, uh, and that you know, we, we we at some point in, in a lot of these rural parishes, um, you know, Robbie and I are lucky we have some suburban areas. Uh, but you, you're looking at we are sometimes the biggest employers as well. So when you look at what we've had to put out as far as PPE for our health units, for our jails, in some cases now the Louisiana Department of Education is telling local school districts to contact their parish emergency preparedness offices for PPE as kids return to schools and faculty and staff begin to get back into congregate settings these costs are going to continue to add up for us. This particular act is 
for flexible spending, for us to use at our discretion to handle the things. There's just so many unknowns. The, the cost of PPE, as Archie's you know, made sure we all understand. Uh, and when we look at what has happened in the decline of sales tax revenue, uh, for us in coastal Louisiana, what happens for uh, the declining revenue from the oil and gas industry, which is how we fund capital projects, especially here in Lafourche, as far as roadways and drainage and pumps, um, that's going to be huge because we're having to make up, we're having to, we're having to take some of that revenue from other places. Uh, state of Louisiana, for the first time in any, any time that the, the government, the federal government has just allocated a, a lot of money, like $1.8 billion, it was in the bank before they had the rules on how to spend it. Both the left and the right realize the impacts that this has to the constituents back home, and we don't get caught up in a, in a pork barrel fight where we're trying to make, um, you know, other priorities put into this or we see you know, a whole lot of other revenue dumped in to where we can, you know, and, and you know, I give it to our Congressman Gary Graves uh, for pushing when, when the, the, the CARES Act and the Pay Tech Protection Program happened. This week marked the start of the annual PBS Short Film Festival. That's the online festival which looks to increase the reach and visibility of independent films. Each year, 25 films are selected for online vote, and this year LPB is sponsoring two of them, To Infinity and Preston's Gone. Preston's Gone takes place in Cachada. It's about a mentally ill Army vet killed by police when being picked up to be taken to the hospital. You can watch and vote on LPB's films at lpb.org slash filmfest. Vote by clicking on the heart button. You can vote once every 24 hours. The festival runs until July 26th. Caleb Lewis was named a 2020 Louisiana Young Hero after a very challenging couple of years. He overcame a traumatic brain injury playing soccer and continued to help those who have lost everything in some of the poorest countries in the world. Caleb Lewis knows a few things about challenges. In um, 2018, I had the traumatic brain injury and that is easily, you know, pretty well a life changing event. Um, Every day I wake up and it's, you know, it's still a struggle. It's still, it's easy to just, okay, I just have to put my head down and keep going. But at some point it is like, it's tiring. That injury, a result of his love of soccer. In 2017, I had three concussions. And then in 2018, I was hitting the head at a soccer practice. Felt pretty fine. I got up, you know, normal at that point. That probably would have been concussion, maybe four or five. And so went home and fell asleep. I woke up basically four, about four days, five days later, like in the hospital. Lewis fought his way back, continuing what he had done before the brain injury, helping those who need it the most, many who've lost everything. In some way, a lot of the work is almost, it's great to help other people, but a big part of it is not in a selfish way, but it's, it's really growing and helpful for you. And it made me, I would say like, develop as a person. That much needed volunteerism has taken him around the world, developing new memories to replace the ones he lost to his brain injury. Last summer though, we did um, a trip to Mozambique, Africa, and that was also for a typhoon that hit um, the east coast of Mozambique, which we did some similar recovery efforts there with supplying some basic food and stuff like that, but then also some working with the local community for building houses and stuff for a bunch of the people that had lost, well, their homes or where they were living. Caleb's dad founded a Christian mission organization and taught his children early the importance of giving back and remaining faithful. Caleb was just four years old when he picked up his first shovel. It's easy to go for one week and you're there and you see people and you help people and then you go home. That's great and that's wonderful and it, and it brings a lot of help to those people, maybe. Um, but the faith-based part of it, it comes in a lot of, it. it is emotionally draining to, you know, go there and want to just have that good attitude and have that servant's heart. And so that faith-based, I would say, is really like that emotional support, that, that faith-based support that you take along with you when it's, you know, trip after trip and you're constantly on airplanes flying around the world and it's tolling on you. And speaking of airplanes, Lewis achieved another incredible accomplishment at just 16 years old, getting his private pilot's license. I was really blessed to have all the opportunities I have had. And with Civil Air Patrol, that gave me the chance to pretty much every year I'd go away for 
three, four weeks of the summer just for that, going to flight school, Barksdale Air Force Base, we would host basic training. Killa's message to others facing what seems like insurmountable challenges, never give up. My biggest thing is, is every day it's, it's a wake up and I'm gonna cross the finish line today. And so it's, it's good to have a big perspective and, a, and big goals and, and all of that. But at the end of the day, it, it is a lot of like, you wake up and you go to bed. And so keeping that good attitude and that you're gonna fight through things from morning till night is such an important key because if you lose that, it's, it's easy to get lost in, in your big term goals. Caleb with that never give up spirit decided to continue to play soccer and despite that very scary brain injury says it was one of his best years ever. The Louisiana Young Heroes program is being presented this year by the generous support of the propane dealers of Louisiana with additional support from the Hancock Whitney Bank, Community Coffee, Demco and Hotel Indigo. And everyone, that is our show for this week. Remember, you can watch anything LPB anytime, wherever you are with our LPB app. You can catch LPB news and public affairs shows as well as other Louisiana programs that you've come to enjoy over the years. And please like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For everyone here at Louisiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Andre Morrow. And I'm Natasha Williams. Thanks for watching. Until next time, that's the state we're in. Entergy is proud to support programming on LPB and greener practices that preserve Louisiana. The goal of our environmental and sustainability initiatives really is to ensure that our kids and future generations can be left with a cleaner planet. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you.